Hi, honeys. It's Michelle Escalin and Zelda. And we're here today to talk to you about the books that we read in November. And I know you're thinking, what do you mean we? Well, she actually lays with me a lot and cuddles with me while I'm reading. So I'm going to say we read them together. Right? Don't you think? <laughs> My beautiful girl. Okay. <laughs> so the the first book that we read is The Whisper Man by Alex North. And I had heard quite a few things about this book uh, before reading it. I read his second book first. I can't remember the name of it right now. So I'll put the name of it up here. I did like the second one more. Here, I'm going to move the book over here because I don't want to cover up Zelda. Um, I did like the second book more. This was a good book. I probably would give it four out of five stars. But I just didn't find it as scary or as scintillating as the second one. Uh, this was a bit of a quick read for me. It's about a man named Tom and his son Jake. They decide to move back to the town that Tom grew up in. Um, after Tom's wife passes away to kind of get a new start. And there's a killer called the Whisper Man in the book that, I don't want to give anything away, but so that's kind of what the, the book is about is there's this, he moves there and there's this scary serial killer called the Whisper Man who's in prison, but it seems like he might have kind of a copycat situation going on. Um, the book does involve a lot of child abuse and kidnapping and that kind of stuff, which is probably why I didn't like it as much. I, I don't have kids, but I still don't like any any um, child or animal abuse in books. It's like too much for me. So I guess that's why I wasn't as big of a fan of this book. But there's two detectives in this book, Amanda and Pete, and Pete is probably my favorite character. Pete is a character that experiences a lot of personal growth in the book, and I really liked that. I also do really like the fact that um, Alex North, he has characters that have flaws, he has likable characters, so it's one of those situations where, yes, they feel human, but I can't help but care about them, so I care about what happens to them. I've been reading a lot of books lately by authors that have characters that are so unlikable or just boring that I don't care what happens to them. So it makes it harder to be invested in the storyline. So I, I just want to give props to Alex North that he does actually do really good character development. The next book that I read was The Star-Crossed Sisters of Tuscany by Lori Nelson Spielman. This was my book of the month selection. And I really enjoyed it. I don't typically read, this was kind of a romance situation, but not really, but kind of. Um, and I don't usually read a whole lot of romance books, but I did really enjoy this. This book is about two cousins, Amelia and Lucy, who are part of a family that appears to have a curse where the second born daughter of each family will never find love. And they have a great aunt named Poppy who says, hey, you two are the second born uh, girls in each of your families. And I want to take you to Italy so we can break the curse. So that's what the book is about. It's really good. It's really fun. I loved the great aunt Poppy. She's fun and she's funny and she's full of great advice. This book is kind of, if, if you were to read a movie. It's kind of under the Tuscan sun meets the holiday. This book is fun. It's festive. It's got beautiful descriptions of the different countrysides and the different cities in Italy. And I couldn't help but crave my favorite food of all time, spaghetti with meatballs, as I was reading about the delicious foods that they were eating in Italy. And there's also a bunch of wonderful advice and life lessons that the aunt offers that I couldn't help but take notes on. So often when I watch 
romantic movies or I read romance novels, I feel like there's kind of a fairy tale take on love and I don't feel that it's very sincere or real. And what I liked about this book was they actually depicted what true love is really like. And I thought that was wonderful. It wasn't the, your Prince Charming will show up and whisk you off into the sunset and you will be happy for the rest of your life with this person. Or it wasn't so many movies and books portray that it's okay for someone to treat you terribly, but that's not real love. And I just really appreciated a honest take on love, what it really is. I got so much out of this book. It's about having a backbone, going after the life that, that you want, not letting people walk all over you. Um, for me personally, it really hit home that it's important to not walk around on eggshells around people because no one is ever really happy with other people anyway, if we're honest. I mean, I have found so many times in my life, if I'm trying so hard to make somebody happy, they still aren't. So why not just be who I am, live the life I want to live, and they can be unhappy no matter what. <laughs> but it, it's just a nice reminder to go after the life that you want to live, not the life that other people want you to live or the life that you think other people want you to live. I really wish I had read this book when I was in high school because it really did have so many beautiful lessons in it. I read that the author lives in Michigan and she has a master's degree in, what was it? I'm sorry, uh, pathology and guidance counseling. Guidance counseling, okay, now it makes sense why she was able to write so many wonderful life lessons in this book. But I really recommend this one. I give it five stars. The next book I read was A Lesson in Hope by Philip Gulley. Now, one thing I found out is Philip Gulley is an author, obviously, but he's also a pastor at the uh, in the Quaker church. Now, I don't recall ever reading a book in my entire life that is what you would call a religious book or a Christian book or a book written by a pastor. I just don't think I ever have. I wasn't sure going in what I would think, but I decided why not be open-minded and give it a chance. Just because I haven't read a book like this before doesn't mean I can't start now. And I really enjoyed it. It was like a cup of warm tea or a nice big hug, which is very comforting and relaxing and warm. It was a wonderful book to read right around the holidays and it did have Thanksgiving in it as you can see on the cover it also had Christmas it had a really nice rhythm to it like a really good comedy um, TV show or movie and it was really funny it was really interesting too because the pastor in this book his name is Sam and he has flaws he's a human being he's not perfect which is part of why I think I've avoided reading some of the religious books is I don't really want to read about perfect people. I mean, it's not very realistic, is it? And he's very human. He thinks terrible thoughts. He thinks negative thoughts. He, it doesn't mean he acts on them, but just he's a human being. And I really enjoyed that part of it, but he's a human being in a funny way. So I couldn't help but laugh a lot. I just really enjoyed reading it. Also, this book has an underlying message about boundaries, about what happens when you set them and what happens when you don't. And I found it very refreshing and fun to read. I am actually planning on looking into the other books that he has written. Um, I want to read more. I, I know that this is not the first book in this series. Um, and I know there's another one after it because they have the first chapter to it at the end of the book. So I definitely recommend this one. I think you, that you would love it. If you're open to, you know, reading this kind of book, you would really enjoy it. So I was very lucky. I had a month full of books that I enjoyed. <laughs> How often does that happen? Not very often. I mean, you know, I've had so many books I can't even finish. <laughs> so I was really excited that I was able to read so many good books. 
The next book I read was very difficult to read and it was very heavy and it was 1984 by George Orwell. And when I say it was hard to read, it's not just because of the subject matter, but sometimes it's hard to understand what he's saying. I had to reread different parts a couple times just to understand what he was getting at. So it's definitely a very thought-provoking book. So Mr. Orwell wrote this book in 1949 about a fictitious future world. And I believe he wrote it as a warning of what could happen if we're not careful. And he sure nailed it. He was sure able to see different twists and turns that the world would take. I mean, to, to think about what was going on in 1949 I'm sure a lot of what he got from uh, the book came from World War II and maybe even parts of World War I and other aspects of history. But I just, this book was very, very thought compelling. It definitely is a warning as to what could happen. It was very scary though. I found it to be like a horror novel where I had a hard time falling asleep sometimes at night. There are certain aspects of what he wrote that I feel are happening now and other aspects that aren't. Some things that I took away from this are that people or governments or communities, they can tell you what to do, but they can't tell you what to think. Nobody can control your thoughts. I think the amount of corruption it would take to become a leader of a country means that anybody that's in politics or high up in politics is probably corrupt to some degree. And I find that scary, but it just, sadly, it is what it is. I feel like we're forced to always vote for a lesser of two evils and I find it very sad. So I guess what we're being asked each time we vote is which evil do we find worse? Not who do we believe in? So while this book is scary and it is a warning of what can happen to our society or other societies if we're not careful, I do feel it was also a reminder to hold dear to that which makes you human, to hold dear to what you love, what your hopes are, to learning different things, to finding a meaning of life, to being that which makes you you, and, and to cling to that dearly. <laughs> it's very hard to say what this book means because I think a lot of people would walk away with a different meaning. I would give it five out of five stars because it was really good. I think it is important for people to read, although I don't know if I would recommend that a lot of people read it. It's pretty scary. You have to go into it with an open mind and you have to go into it being well and willing to have your eyes open to a certain extent. But it was really good. And I am being intentionally vague with this book because I don't want to inject politics into my page little side note, it was part of why I think it was hard for me to read. I tend to have more of a Tinkerbell outlook on life. I'm like sprinkling pixie dust everywhere and, you know, trying to be so happy and have this happy outlook. And it was scary. It was very dark and it was... <laughs> But like I said, it's a reminder to keep that part of me alive and at the forefront and fierce and passionate and you know, just keep being who we are kind of thing. Anyway, while I was reading that book, if I'm reading a really heavy book, I will usually, just to help myself get through it, read something that is very light. And I found uh, in my collection of TBR books, this book here called A Year Between Friends. And it's by um, Maria Alexandra Vatisse and Stephanie Congdon Barnes. These are two friends that live 3191 miles apart 
and they are dear friends and they're both photographers and what they they do is they send each other photos and they write each other a letter each month and they share recipes and DIY projects and that kind of thing and it's just a very relaxing soothing way to get myself through a real deep book like 1984 I found it just wonderful to read about their lives, what was going on each month. They're both in very different chapters in their lives. One of them has teenagers who are about to move out of the home, and the other one is pregnant with her first child. So it's very different um, chapters of, of their lives, and I found that really kind of fun because we don't have to be friends with people who are in the exact same moment of their lives as we are. That would be really boring. Also... It was such a beautiful take on each of the seasons and each the months of the year. So if you're someone like me who loves the four seasons, who loves the different ebbs and flows of each month of the year, this is definitely the book for you. To show you an example, here's some of the photos that are in the book. And then each month it has the litter from each friend. It's a beautiful take on friendship too. And then it's got you know, recipes and then information about different times of the year. It's just such a beautiful book. So the one friend that has the children who are getting older, lives in Portland, Oregon, and the other friend who's pregnant lives in Maine. What town does she live in? Portland, Maine. <laughs> That's cute, Portland and Portland. But I highly recommend this one. It's interesting looking at the books that I read this month because with it being fall and it's such a time of change and harvest and leaves and just out with the old and with the new kind of thing, it just feels like the books I read were perfectly appropriate for this month. Now the first book I read that was kind of one of the last scary books that I hadn't finished in October. But the other ones were about change out with the old and with the new, deciding what I want to hold on to and what I want to let go of. So it was just a really fun, beautiful learning month for me reading wise. And I'm excited about December. Um, I'm thinking about, let me know what you think, if, if you think I should or not. There's a, a tag that I saw of a different six different books with different themes that um, they're trying the person that came up with this tag it, it's I guess it's more of a book challenge than a tag but what they're trying to get people to read is you know a book that's cozy a book that um, has lights on the cover and that kind of stuff so if you think I should partake in that challenge let me know Otherwise, I will probably read a bunch of holiday books in the month of Christmas. Otherwise, I will probably read a bunch of holiday books in the month of December. But I would love to hear what you would like to hear about at the end of December. Next week on Sunday, I will be doing a video about, it's a tag that one of my friends tagged me in about nonfiction books. So be sure to tune in next Sunday for that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe to me down below. And if you want to know when my videos are posted, be sure to hit the notification bell as well. I love you. Bye.